Hello, hello, hello. Knits for Sanity here and welcome to my knitting whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress, which for me tonight is knitting. And it can include a work of pro work in progress of your own, whether that is a crafting item or a chore or exercising. And the chat part, just sit back or get busy and let me chat at you for anywhere from about 30 to 60 minutes. So that is what a whip and chat is. This, like I said, is my knitting whip and chat. It is really no different from my diamond painting nip and whip and chat, except that in this one, I'm working on a knitting project versus diamond painting. And that really is about it. This will be the last time you see this particular knit in a whip and chat. I busted butt on this thing today spent several hours on it and I'm down to my last two rows and then my bind off row. So just three more rows and I am done. Uh, I will of course then wash this. I can't really block it because it is an acrylic yarn. However, washing it and laying it out nice does ensure that it will look good and it will still lay nice. It is true that you can't really block an acrylic yarn, meaning you cannot reshape it with a wool yarn or anything out of natural fiber some more so than others but particularly a wool yarn you can actually kind of stretch a garment into shape you can't really do that with acrylic but a good washing and laying it flat to dry will definitely present with a much better end product just a little information there so yes I am finally finally almost done with this thing and I am so relieved not that I I mean I really enjoy knitting shawls like this they're very simple they are very relaxing but after having done five of them in the last few months I'm just ready to be done <laughs> but then of course I have that monster blanket that I was telling you about I call it monster blanket just because blankets are just monsters they are huge and they're not, they're just not fun knits, at least not for me. I think there probably are people out there who really enjoy knitting blankets. I am not that person. I wish I were. And I will do this because um, it is for a very good reason. And it's to help out, you know, a friend. And so anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, my last knitting whip and chat from a week ago, I go into that. But then this evening... I got an email from my son's teacher. I had sent her an email letting her know that starting tomorrow on Monday, for me, Monday, um, I will need to pick up my son 15 minutes early from school on pretty much every Monday for the rest of the school year. He has dance class, and dance class is a little ways away from our house. It's a little bit of a drive. And the only way that he'll make it in time for his first class is I have to pick him up 15 minutes early from school. I consider dance part of his education. He's only in first grade. He's only missing the last 15 minutes of the day, one day a week. I just, I don't have any kind of a problem with it. So tomorrow he begins dance again. He is taking hip hop and tap. Last year he took hip hop. And his spring recital, he was in that, and it was a hip-hop number. And then over the summer, he took a shorter hip-hop and tap classes just to try out something new. And he told me that he really, really liked tap, and he wants to keep doing tap. So Mondays are going to be very long, long days. I pick him up, him up from school, we get down for his hip-hop class, and then we have almost an hour of time in between his hip-hop and his tap class that I'm not sure what we're going to do during that time. I mean, I'll pack along food for him, and he'll, he can eat during that time. I don't know. And then he has tap, and then we don't get home till about 7.30 in the evening when he'll probably need to eat something again and then pretty much go to bed. So super long, long days, but he really enjoys it. And 
I'm just, I'm thankful that right now, at least we're still able to provide him for this, provide him with this. And we'll just hope that that will be able to continue on. Um, it's not especially inexpensive, but I'm hopeful that we'll be able to continue to make it work out for him because he does enjoy it. It's <laughs> kind of comical. He has only ever been the only boy in any of his dance classes. At his recital, there was one other boy who performed, but he was a few years younger than my son. And then this past summer, I did notice there were a couple other little boys taking classes. None of them were in his class, though. But we'll see. Maybe he'll finally have a little boy in his hip hop or dance or tap class this year. That might be kind of fun, although I don't think he minds. <laughs> He's so used to girls being with his sisters and then so many of our friends, we get together with them and Havelock is still the only boy. <laughs> I think, I don't know. He's going to be, he could be difficult come his teenage years because he's so comfortable with girls. So I don't, I don't know. He, he could be a bit of a challenge in a few years here. Um, so I kind of jumped ahead to what's going on tomorrow. Also tomorrow I have to pick up, well, I have to pick up my oldest from school 15 minutes early before the end of the day as well, because she has a doctor's appointment, but it's a telehealth that I'm hoping, I am hoping we can get to work over the end, our internet tomorrow. The last time there was a she was supposed to have this appointment in July, and it was a nightmare. We could not get connected, and uh, it was abysmal, and I was so embarrassed. So I'm hoping tomorrow will go much better. But if I pick her up 15 minutes early, her last class of the day, she already has her youngest sister in there with her. So two of my three girls at the school have class together, and... So it makes sense to then also have her come because if the one is going to head out, they both may as well head out. But then I can't leave the third child there because that would make her irate. So I'm just going to pick everybody up from school 15 minutes early tomorrow. And then we'll do my daughter's doctor's appointment, doctor appointment, and then I will get my son and then it's dance class. And yeah, that's going to be tomorrow afternoon and evening pretty well settled right there but the good news I am almost done with this shawl <laughs> oh, I have to get a hold of the gal though who purchased this because I don't think I have an up-to-date mailing address for her and I'm shipping it to her so I gotta do that tomorrow oh so I guess I got distracted I'm kind of stressed out about dance class and my daughter my daughter's doctor appointment and I'm trying to figure out how to do picking them up early from school but not super early because the carpool lanes are already going to be packed 15 minutes before the end of the day so I'm not sure where I'm going to park to be able to get my kids and be able to get them out of the building and back home or to dance class on time so I'm a little stressed about this whole I have to pick them up early but it's not so early that it will be easy. It's at about the worst possible early time I could do. I don't want to get them any earlier than that. I don't anyway. I'm stressed about that. But what I had started to say in the beginning is I had this blanket project, but then tonight I had emailed my son's teacher just letting her know, hey, I got to get my son starting early tomorrow on Mondays. And she wrote me back <laughs> And she says, random question, do you do any felting? <laughs> She's wondering if I can create some fruits and veggies for their farmer's market stand. And I thought, at first I thought to myself, huh, I wonder how she'd even think to ask me if I did any felting because, like, I don't know her personally at all and <laughs> you know we're not connected on social media I don't know her and I thought that's really weird how, how does she know that I might do felting 
Then I went, oh, foolish, foolish me. It's because my son, I think, honestly believes that he won't be able to breathe if he stops talking. Hello. He's probably already told her about 50 million times over. Well, you know, my mom knits. My mom knits. My mom's a really good knitter. She knits. She can knit anything. <laughs> Especially because this teacher has already described my son as having a wealth of knowledge, which I think I've mentioned on here before. Really, that translates as this child just doesn't know how to not talk. <laughs> so that's how she knows that maybe I could felt something. Uh, truth be told, I can felt. I have not done it in a number of years. So I'm not sure if I want to... And I'm guessing because she wants it for the farmer's market. Farmer's market season is just about over here. There's really only about a month left of farmer's market opportunities here. So I'm thinking she doesn't want it till next spring, which would be like next May. Uh, so I, I technically have plenty of time to figure out and even do, you know, some sample pieces and stuff to do these fruits and veggies. Uh, but I'm also thinking, yes, but I also have that huge blanket that I have to do. And then that will mean that this winter is spent really having zero opportunity to do any kind of pleasure knitting. And I just, oh, I don't know if I want to do that, but then I feel terrible. And like, I already know me. I know that if I tell her, Really, I just don't feel comfortable. My skills aren't good enough with that, or which is kind of true. You know, like I said, I'd want to try out a couple of different things first before I presented her with something and said, hey, you know, is this what you had in mind? Um, but I know me, and then I'd probably still spend the winter trying out different things. Just because I feel so bad that I, I told her no. I'm not good at saying no. If you haven't guessed, I, I love being able to do things for people. And that's kind of a little bit of a flaw. How, and I could use tips with this, guys. How do you say no to something that you really would like to be able to do? Like you genuinely would like to be able to do it. And especially when it is targeting something that is unique to you. You know, not everybody can just be asked, hey, are you able to felt fruits and veggies? <laughs> and be like, yeah, I can do that. I mean, that's kind of a unique skill. And so it's really, that makes it even harder for me to say no. So how, how do you guys say no to something that you want to do, that you almost feel obligated to do, and then not have guilt about it later? Even though you know that the best thing is probably just to decline this time. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm still struggling with that. I'm, I'm supposed to be this, you know, full grown adult. And there are so many life lessons that I still don't have. Which, I mean, is great. Because you don't ever want to start, stop evolving and developing. And, you know, there's always, always room to build character and learn new things. But... I'm really struggling with this one. So if you have any advice on that, I'd really appreciate it. And that got kind of like very, uh, I don't want to say deep, but <laughs> I started going a little philosophical there. So anyway, let's go back to some more fun things. Um... My last whip and chat was Wednesday night, and since then, Thursday was relatively boring. My son had his second flag football game, which went much better than his first flag football game. Pretty much that gray team, he's on the green team, and last Tuesday he went against the gray team, and that, that was just, that was a nightmare. This gray team is just killing everybody, but again, there's a reason for that. Go back and watch that whip and chat. But Thursday night's game went much better, and and my son did well. I mean, for being a, a little guy, 
one of the younger players on this particular team. He did well. You know, there was one time where he was in charge of snapping the ball. And he snapped the ball and then he immediately performed their play. Like, they do have some very basic plays that they do. And I was watching him and he snapped the ball and then he took off and did his play exactly like how he was supposed to. You know, he found his guy and blocked him. So it was kind of, it was kind of cool. I, I hope he continues to show that kind of interest and continues to grow and improve. Last year, he did really well the first couple weeks of games, but then the last couple weeks, he just didn't care anymore at all. And I mean, he still went through that a little bit Thursday night. At one point, I watched him and he and a member of the other team are just walking across the field next to each other chatting <laughs> in the middle of this game. And my husband's like, well, yeah, but you said it was someone from the other team, right? I said, well, yeah. So he was distracting him. You know, that was one player that wasn't doing his job then. That is true. That That is true. <laughs> um, so that, that was fun. It was a good game. I was a little disappointed. I had forgotten that I was going to try and hit up the JV game afterward because that was home. Thursday night, but I I didn't think of it, and so we didn't drive separately, and by the time we were done, my son was really beat. He overheats quite easily, and it was quite warm yet Thursday night, and so he was really red, and he'd had so much water already. He really needed to get home. He needed to have a shower, cool shower, cool down, eat some more food, so there was no JV game that we took in Thursday night. And that's okay. They have one or two more that'll be home games that hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to make it to one of them. I'd like to try and see at least one. Um, what else? Oh, Thursday. I did not go to that knitting group. Thursday ended up just being kind of a crazy day. I can't remember what else happened. But there was just too much going on on Thursday that I went, oh, I am not doing that knitting group. So I didn't. Maybe this coming week. I don't know. This week's really crazy too. Actually, every week is pretty much crazy. There's not very often that a week is not going to be crazy for me because I have four children. Um, But we'll see. Maybe, maybe this week. I don't remember what's going on. I have to look at my planner. Friday, Friday morning, my son was hysterical. So, because we have this teeny tiny house, my oldest daughter shares a room with my son. Kind of. Really, it's her room and my son just has an upper bunk. <sighs> my poor boy doesn't really have a room and I feel really bad. There's nothing that we can do about it, though. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're using what we have, you know? So, what happens then in the morning, because the girls all have to get up a lot earlier than what he does because of how schools work here. My girl starts school so dang early. They're on the bus about 6.30 in the morning, which is better than it was last year. But they're up, you know, 5.30 or whatever. So my husband will carry my son from his bed and put him in our bed in the morning. Well, Friday morning when it was time for him to wake up, my husband always comes in and he sings him this song. It's from Bear in the Big Blue House. It's the Good Morning from the Sun song, which then on the weekends, my son will often come in and sing that song to my husband. It's really sweet. So my husband comes in and he's like, good morning, good morning, good morning from the sun. <laughs> not even fully awake scooches down the bed under the covers and just says no no <laughs> he wasn't even awake guys <laughs> that was so funny this little body squirms down like a worm under the covers and or you know a worm burrowing back into the ground <laughs> no no <laughs> Oh, it was pretty good. 
let's see, on Friday, the extra part, well, not the extra part, but the part that my dog damaged of my last little shelving unit that I need to put together arrived, but I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> I didn't think of it again until I think today when I went, oh, that's right. I could actually put that last shelving unit together now. But it was funny because it came in a UPS box out of Canada, which, I mean, I didn't get a notification that this part had shipped. I mean, I just got an email like, yeah, we'll send you that part. But that was it. I didn't, I didn't hear anything else. There was no shipping notification, no tracking, nothing. So my daughter comes in with this box and it's a UPS box, but it's a decorated UPS box and Christmas lights. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. What? Where is this even from? And the place that it said it was from was a company that did not sound at all familiar. It was not the same name of the company that I looked up to email their customer service about this shelving unit. But I opened the box and I pull out this piece like it was just stuffed in there with a bunch of brown paper and that was it <laughs> it was it was so weird there was there was no other like slip of paper in there saying what it, there was nothing it was just this one piece of the shelving unit surrounded by brown paper in this box okay I mean that's fine that's what I need but it was just I don't know it was kind of weird so I did get that last piece. So I have to try and get together that last shelf now. And then Friday night, we did go to the football game. My middle two daughters and me. That was kind of in jeopardy because daughter number two came home in a foul mood. She had math homework that she had not submitted. And actually that's becoming another problem again this year. This child and her math homework. Her math teacher emailed me saying that, oh, she has another assignment that she has not submitted yet either. And so I pestered her about it all weekend and asked her repeatedly, have you done that assignment? No, no. Well, she hasn't done it, guys. She has not done it. And I don't know what to do about it. When wrestling starts, we have a rule that if there's two or more missed math assignments, she can't go to practice. Um, which she does not, you know, she does not like having wrestling taken away from her. And that's great, but she needs to do, she needs to learn that it's just better to do the work herself anyway. And that it's even better to submit a not fully complete assignment, but at least submit what you have done I don't know. It's just then this cycle where she thinks, you know, she believes I'm dumb and I'm not any good, really specifically at math. But she has been going through this with like all subjects, but I'm dumb. I'm not good at math, which is not really true. She is actually good at math. She is an advanced math and she does deserve to be there. Like she has earned that. She is mathematically intelligent enough to be in advanced math um but then if you know she thinks she's dumb but then she doesn't do her homework and doesn't hand it in so then her grade suffers and then she has a bad grade which just then confirms that yes I'm dumb and I'm not any good at math <laughs> so I'm just going to continue to not apply myself and not do my homework and not turn it in and continue to get a bad grade, which will just reinforce that I'm bad at math. Uh, and I don't know. She's 12. I can't, I mean, I can't force her to do her math homework at this point in her life. And I'm sick of nagging her. I was probably on her case five to eight times this weekend about this math homework. Starting... Saturday early afternoon through this evening and I'm just uh, I'm sick of it but at the same time if I don't nag her and if I don't try and force her to hand this stuff in which is also a problem she has a tendency to actually do the work or get most of it done but then not submit it either because there's one or two problems that she didn't complete so because it's not completed she doesn't hand it in or she just forgets about it 
she just thinks, oh, it's done. And then forgets that you need to actually submit it for it to actually be done. Uh, I don't know. Parenting is hard. It's just so hard. <laughs> and she's a smart kid. She really, she's so smart. And technically, technically she's quite quite intelligent. She actually would be a very good engineer. I, uh, I don't know. So anyway, she came home Friday kind of in a fall mood, but then she did get the one missing assignment done and submitted, but it was the one assignment that I saw. So then her teacher emailed me and said, oh no, there's another one that doesn't show up in my like parent portal. She doesn't have that one submitted either. But I didn't know that until I was at the game that night. So she did get that other one done. So we went to the game. And the girls ended up having really a pretty good time. Um, our team did phenomenal. I felt bad. I felt bad for the other team. Because <laughs> it was, a, let's put it this way. It was a boring game. It, it, it ended at 42-0. And... The game was going so poorly that by the time we got to the second half, I think starting in the third quarter, they just started to let the clock run. Like, they just didn't stop the clock anymore. So, the second half of the game was done in about 30 minutes. <laughs> um, which was kind of nice to be done and then get out of there. But I always feel bad when that happens. And, I mean, our teams had it happen to us, too, many times over. So, it's it's not like... It's not like the boys haven't ever experienced the other end of this, too. But I always feel kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> and so it would have it, it would have been much higher than 42-0 had they continued to stop the clock with, like, every flag. and But they didn't. They just let the clock run. But what was really interesting with that game... Normally after the games, particularly if it's a win, my daughter number two will want to go and see her favorite athlete and tell him, you know, hey, good job and that kind of thing. But Friday night, I, I don't know, it was, it was really dark in this stadium, which is bizarre because it was the night before the full moon. And I actually got a great picture of the moon that night after we got home from the game. Maybe I'll put it in here. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you've not seen it. If you do follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. But you know what? I'll just stick it in here because it's a pretty cool picture. So it was almost a full moon. The full moon was just last night. But it was it was dark and it was crowded. And so we were leaving and Veda herself said, you know what, Mom? If I don't see him on our way out, that's okay. I don't have to talk to him tonight. And I think it was kind of a combination of just feeling really overwhelmed and crowded because it was, it just didn't feel real comfortable. It was, it was just eerily dark, not nearly enough lighting in there. And it was crowded and it stayed relatively warm um, and the team, it was such an easy, easy defeat that it didn't really feel victorious. So we didn't see them. And in fact, we didn't see really any of the players that we know on our way out of the stadium. So we just left. And when we got to the car, she asked to send him a text. And so she did that. She just sent him a message. And about an hour later, you know, he responded, you know, oh, thank you. And that's okay. I'll see you again soon. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but that was really interesting. Uh, as she's getting older, she's becoming more aware, too, of when sometimes it's best just to move on out. Um, you know, I'm done trying to cope with uncomfortable situations, and there's no reason for me to have to cope with this situation anymore because she's really sensitive to noise and feeling crowded and that kind of thing. And, and, you know, realizing I don't have to really cope with this anymore. I can just go. So that was good. But it was still, I mean, it was still a good game. Our boys had 
a couple of really good plays. <laughs> you know, it's always... Did this happen at the... I think it did happen at this game. But, I mean, it's it's always a, a good... It's always... Well, depends what side you're on. But it's always a good game when you end up catching your own kickoff. <laughs> you know, when you end up getting control of the ball after your own kickoff. Um, they had a couple of really stupid moves too. I mean, one fumble that was just ridiculous. And I actually was kind of hopeful that the other team would be able to actually maybe get like some points on the board, but they didn't. <laughs> oh, well, I think I'm going to actually knit just two more rows because I have enough yarn sitting over here. We'll just give it a little bit more of an edge. I mean, why not? I'm still talking, right? <laughs> Um, the other thing that was kind of funny, I can't remember if we were going to the game or coming home from the game, but same daughter, daughter number two, she, she's like me, you know, she thinks differently. We just think differently. That's something that neurodivergent people are known for is we <laughs> that's just kind of like a biological fact we think differently from a majority of the population but we were either going to or from the game and she was telling me <laughs> how she was thinking about it and she's like you know mom at wrestling tournaments when they place you you know like one through four like yeah and in case you don't know in wrestling you place through fourth place uh there's there's a reason for that, and it's, <laughs> I don't want to try and explain it. Just know that in wrestling, you always place through fourth, which is why, like, at the Olympics, there's always two bronze medals. You probably didn't know that either, but <laughs> at the Olympics for wrestling, you have a gold, a silver, and two bronze. In wrestling, you always have to place through fourth, and that's just because of how the brackets work. Um, except at state, at least in Michigan, you place through eighth, the top eight. Anyway. And so she's like, you know how in wrestling you place, you know, through fourth place? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I've decided that they must be talking about negative numbers. And I pause and she's like, and she says, because, you know, negative one is greater than negative two or negative three or negative four. Otherwise, why would you have First place, number one, be the best when two, three, and four are all larger than number one. And I got thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I can see what she's saying here. She's like, so then they must actually be thinking in negative numbers when they place with first, with the number one being the best. So it must actually be a negative one, but you can't say negative because then that just makes it all sound, you know, bad. So they just drop the negative, but really they're thinking negative numbers. <laughs> and I just thought that was really interesting. I could totally understand what she was saying there. If you consider something better to be greater than, you would think that the numbers with the larger quantity would be considered the better ones. So I thought that was interesting. And then she also said to me that she thinks of negative numbers as needing to be filled up. And that's how she figures out basic arithmetic using negative numbers. So if you have negative two, but you add three, you fill up the two negative ones and then you have one extra and positive. So I, I liked that illustration of like filling up negative numbers. I thought that was pretty clever too. So, I mean, she's, she's a smart kid. She's clever. She thinks different. Anyway, that's, that's just more on her. I didn't, I didn't want to feel like I was being all negative about her because that's certainly not the case. Uh... Saturday was yesterday. Yesterday was so hot. Oh, it was hot and muggy. It was awful. I thought it was supposed to rain. That didn't come till today. Yesterday, excuse me, yesterday was really, really actually quite miserable. But 
my husband and child number two and my son, they went farm standing. And I guess my daughter made friends with the new Amish family that lives in one of the houses that we frequent. But this past year, the family that we've known there for the last several years, they moved out and a new family moved in there. So my daughter made friends with a 12 or 13 year old Amish girl. I guess they were talking about the misery of wearing glasses and how annoying younger brothers are. And <laughs> Uh, which is good. Um, oh, and we checked out our mystery squash. Mystery squash. Every year we grow mystery squash. All right. So <laughs> I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, knits for Sandy really. Whew, the more we listen to her, she's getting stranger and stranger. Um, so we eat quite a bit of squash in our house. And I mean, we can just buy it in truckloads practically with all of the Amish farms around us who grow squash and then they put it up at their farm stands. And we like squash quite a bit. So we eat a lot of squash in the autumn and then over the winter. And we compost. It's not any kind of like well done or thought out compost it's called we take our food scraps and dump them onto the compost pile <laughs> that's that's as elaborate as it gets for us uh but because of that there's a lot of squash that gets thrown into the compost you know squash innards and every year for i mean years and years now we end up growing what I have called mystery squash. <laughs> because squash, if you're not familiar, they, they like mix together very easily. It's very easy to do crossbreedings of squash and stuff. And so every year we get this assortment of mystery squash. This year, however... We have the largest assortment of mystery squash that I have ever seen. I actually took pictures. You know what? I'll just, I'll put that up too for you. So there you go. That's all of our different types of mystery squashes. And this is the first year that we have an actual mystery, mystery gourd. And I've often joked that this could be our legacy is the mystery squash. <laughs> you know, one day... There will, there will be a mystery squash festival that we hold on our property and people come from far and wide to see the mystery squash that year. And <laughs> so obviously that's not going to happen. But every year we try and eat some of the mystery squash. And there's never been anything that was bad tasting, but there's also never been anything that's been good tasting. It's generally been very bland squash. But we've had some interesting varieties. Like one year we had a squash that had a few strings in it, like a spaghetti, like just like a spaghetti squash. But like the color was all wrong. And then the rest of the rind and stuff were completely different. It was, it's really, it's really kind of interesting. <laughs> and I, I just love watching squash grow. Not that I, I don't, don't worry, I don't sit out there in my lawn chair and like literally watch the squash grow. But if you're not familiar with how squash grow, they grow out in shoots, vine shoots, and they will attach to anything and keep climbing and growing. And we have squash, I mean, they will attach onto neighboring plants, they'll attach onto each other and trees and chairs and lawn garbage and and I, I don't know. And it's just fun watching squash grow, you know, from being this flower to being this tiny little ball or elongated thing to actually being, you know, like a a gourd. I, I don't know. I think squash is kind of cool. I didn't like it as a kid, but now as an adult, I'm like, oh, squash is awesome. And again, I know 
Oh, what am I doing? Guys, this is just, I am, I'm just a little bit crazy. This is what, this is what happens when you live in the country for too long, I guess. I, I don't know. We don't ever, we used to try like actually growing our own squash, but we have horrible vine borers. And we're like the only people we know in the area that we cannot escape the vine borers. And so after trying for a couple of years to grow stuff and realizing that oh, there's so many Amish that grow it around here and they do it great, we'll just buy it from them. We decided to just stop. But and then it's just been mystery squash that has been propagating since then. And the vine borers still attack the mystery squash too all the time, but there's so much of the mystery squash <laughs> that we always, always get plenty of ripened fruits. Again, not that it's like super edible or yummy, but it's it's always interesting. Uh, all right, you know what? I, I can be done talking about the mystery squash. I don't really need to talk about that anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's nip back one more and then we'll cast off on this. Woohoo! Today, super rainy, super, super rainy, but that was good because like I said, I had a bus butt on this shawl, which I wanted to do. And then I recently finished the book. Hold on, I have to take a little drink. I recently finished the book, The Killings at Badger's Drift, which if that sounds familiar to you, because it might, it's by Carolyn Graham. But that book was the first one created, well, and it's book one in a series, but it's the first book in the series that was created into Midsummer Murders, which is a super long running British detective show with Detective Barnaby. Uh, fun, fun show. Anyway, I had started watching it probably 12 years ago now, the show, and I, I haven't seen it recently. I kind of just binged my way through it and it was still ongoing at that point when I when I was watching the show too but I'd have to get it from Netflix remember when Netflix would send DVDs <laughs> that was the only way that we could watch anything was DVD it had to be on DVD we didn't have any kind of cable access or anything like that so I'd have to get DVDs <laughs> from Netflix but that's how I watched the show but I recently read the book and decided, you know, I want to watch that first episode again. Because from what I could remember, the show was quite accurate to the book. And the book was really, really good. The Probably the biggest difference that I noticed while reading the book is that the character of Troy, who is like Barnaby's assistant... He is definitely a less likable character in the book. And that just would not have worked in the show. You you needed a more likable character. So the Troy in the show is a lot more likable than Troy in the books. At least the first book. But otherwise, watching that first episode again today, they did a really good job. They did stay really true to the book. The ways that they changed the show from the book were, it made sense. There, it, it was things to simplify it. Otherwise, the viewer would have gotten confused. It was really, it was really well done. And the end result, even with some minor differences and stuff like that, and you don't have nearly the same cast of characters either that you do in the book. Just you don't have time with a movie, even a movie as long as what Midsummer Murder episodes are. You just there's not time for that. But the end result is still the same. Like the conclusion of both makes sense. 
in the same way. Like there's nothing, what am I trying to say? There's, what am I, what, yeah, you know, I don't know how to say it. I'm Like the same people are guilty in both, yes, but the motive is the same in both. The psychology is the same in both. And in a lot of ways, I think that's probably the most important part of a murder mystery and what you want to for sure have translate from the book to the movie. And they did it really, really well. If you're not familiar and if you're into mysteries at all, I really recommend it. Midsummer Murders is super long running series. It's really good. And I'll be reading more of the books now that I've read the first one which is something I've always wanted to do. And then I just happened upon the first one. So I'm going to start reading the second one in a little bit. I'm actually reading a couple of other things right now. So I'll get down with those. And they're, they're definitely kind of cozy mysteries, what you'd call cozy mysteries. So I did that today while I was knitting. And Midsummer too. If you do want to look it up and you're not familiar, it's M-I-D-S-O-M-M-E-R. Summer is not like the season, but it's S-O-M-M-E-R, just as a heads up. <sighs> today, I also, <sighs> today I also had to email the people who do our school pictures. So my daughter's school pictures came in, but as a downloadable file, except I can't download the pictures. I go to the website. Did I talk about this with you guys? I feel like I have. I go to the website and I can see previews of all the pictures, but I can't download them and I get an error screen. So I wrote the company asking about that. But in the meantime, my son has his school pictures tomorrow. So I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I'll go online and pay for his school pictures, even though I don't know that I'm going to be able to even actually get them because I can't download them. It's just, it's frustrating. Yes, they do have actual packages that you can still get, you know, printed photographs. But I like doing the digital download because I can get free 4 by 6 prints from Shutterfly through their app. And you get a selection of different backgrounds. I don't really care about the background so much, actually. But I just, I like having that flexibility of being able to just print it myself. And it's a lot more affordable do it, printing it that way. But if I can't get these pictures, last year's pictures though, I never ended up printing because um, they weren't really that good. <laughs> like none of them, just daughter number three, her pictures came back pretty good, but the others, I just it's like, oh, they're not even that good of pictures. So that is one downside with doing the digital is it is a lot more likely that then you just won't ever do anything with them. But at least I still own them, right? But this year, I'm afraid I won't even get to own them. Oh, well, my son's just wearing a clean, pretty new t-shirt tomorrow. Nothing special. Nothing special, especially I got to get them for dance. And anyway, so that's tomorrow. School picture woes. Let's see, what else is going on? Oh, so another one of the books I'm reading, if you're into true crime, I am reading this book called American Ripper by, oh, I think it's something Patrick. Hold on a second, hold on. I can actually find out real quick. It, it, oh, Patrick Kendrick. That's who, that's who it is. Patrick Kendrick. Uh, it is about a serial killer from late 60s, early 70s, Florida. Horrendous, god-awful, despicable human. I, I mean, I don't even want to call this man a man. Just disgusting individual. But the book is really really researched material um 
and the inclusion of a lot of copies of primary sources. And I'm not convinced that that's necessarily a good thing. I mean, from a psychological profile perspective, I think it is probably good to have put all of this into one location. But I am telling you, if you are at all queasy, do not read this book. Or at least don't ever, ever, anytime, if you do read it, okay. But then when he lets you know that what you are about to read is the killer's own writings, just skip that section. Don't read it. Just, just skip it. Just trust me. You, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but I'm still really impressed with the amount of time. I mean, this man, Patrick, what was his name? I just, I just found out to Patrick Kendall, Patrick, what did I just say? Oh, Kendrick, Patrick Kendrick. The time he put into this, it must have been well over a thousand hours worth of research that he put into this book, which is pretty impressive. So if you're into true crime and you want what, I mean, I'm still pretty early into it, but if you want what appears to be a very thorough and especially looking for and actually acquiring prime documents um this book is very well done in that way that's american ripper and the author patrick kendrick there we go i got it that time <laughs> oh boy oh boy all right i don't know that i'm gonna i don't know should i bind off i don't feel like it's really necessary for me to bind off with you guys watching i guess i can show you the beginning what i do so I've talked about this before. I always have a salvage stitch at the beginning of every row. When I bind off, I actually keep that salvage stitch. So I will just slip this first stitch. And some people go up a needle size to make sure that your cast off is loose enough. When I bind off, though, I just I keep it naturally quite loose. And I, I don't have a problem with too tight of a cast off. But if you do... That is one option is to go up needle sizes. There are also different bind offs that you can do that will create a looser edge as well. Um, like I said, though, I have, in general, I, I have really good tension and know how to apply the correct tension for what I need to do. And that's just experience. I and mean, it's not, I am not at all like specially gifted. <laughs> in that area it's just experience so enough knitting and that's all that it is and so yeah I will just continue going down like this and I will bind off the rest of this as so but you don't need to so there you go that's my bind off edge just real I mean and then my end here too it looks really really clean because I slip all those first stitches, it just looks real natural when it goes from a row here and then up to my bind off. So if that's something that you are interested in trying, I think you can maybe see that. Anyway, I'm not going to complete this with you here. No need for that. I hope you guys have a wonderful week or day or evening or morning or whatever makes sense for whenever you see this. And again, like I always say, please practice kindness. You just, you don't know what people are going through. And similarly, if you're having a rough day too, I hope people show you plenty and plenty of kindness. Everyone is deserving and worthy of it. Until the next time, be kind and take care.